This morning I thought we would do a, just a review of, uh, in the series, my seashell stories of, uh, I was looking at my small collection that I have here, my crown conches, uh, which are uh, in um, the melange, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, uh, they're, they're really, I don't think they're really a true conch. Uh, they might be kind of like a whelk, although they, because uh, they don't have, uh, true conches have a, uh, the conch notch where their eyes come out, and these guys don't have that. Uh, they're considered a very variable animal uh, because, as you can see, uh, from this one to this one, right, the spikes are really long on this, and on this they're a bit shorter and tighter. Uh, these were not collected at the same time. Uh, in fact, this one wasn't even, uh, I think, I don't know if I purchased this one, but then it, but, uh, part of the story that goes back with these, the reason that, you know, is this one of the few, sh the first shells that I ever really uh, coveted. <laughs> My cannibal lector says, you know, we covet with the eyes. Uh, and I remember uh, my mother and I, we went to the far this pharmacy nearby uh, our house. And uh, the pharmacist had in his display window, he had a, a long one of these, you know. And I was like, wow, that, you know, because I just started paying attention to where the seashells were. And uh, um, the, uh, I was like, oh, man, I, you know, that's on my list. Well, every shell in the world was on my list because I didn't have any, or I had like two. <laughs> so, so anyway, I was like, oh, you know, let's ask, because we knew the pharmacist, he was pretty good friends, and uh, I said, oh, you know, that shell in there, you know. Uh, as a little kid, and he, he was, he was kind enough to uh, uh, know that, that I had a good interest in it, and, and he, the guy gave it to me. So, um, <laughs> so from then on, it probably started a, a lifelong history of begging for seashells, looking longingly at a shell, like hoping that someone will give it to me, <laughs> which has is, which is served me, <laughs> because many people that are not as interested in shells or think, uh, you know, they're, they're kind enough to spread them around, and that's the basis mostly for this, these stories that uh, I'm giving. Uh, so it's uh, sort of like the kindness of uh, people uh, spreading the beauty uh, of seashells uh, to somebody else that, you know, is very interested in it or a young person that has an interest in something good. Um, and uh, so uh, that's part of the story. Now, th these... The story with these guys, which are much smaller, as I said, you can see the size difference in this, and then even get even bigger than this, but they say that uh, from overshelling the, the sizes, like anything, when you overshell anything, you know, and I have the smaller ones, no one wants the small ones. Um, but these, these were from Florida at a place called Pine Island, and this is even a, a tinier one that was there. And... I have a cross-linked, I have the vid videos at Pine Island of these animals uh, living on the, uh, they, they attack the, the uh, oysters, the kind of these sharp, very sharp ridged oysters, and you have to, you can't walk on the oyster clumps because um, they're so sharp. If you have bare feet, you gotta have sneakers or something, but these guys go around uh, chewing on them. And then you can find dead ones uh, that the, the hermit crabs have, you know, taken out, and they use uh, these uh, for their shells. Uh, and uh, so these, uh, these ones, I was trying out, someone said, you, know, you can see the darkness in the color. I uh, just dipped this one in some uh, uh, vinegar. Uh, to try to brighten up, they say that the, the colors will come back if you uh, get rid of some of the calcium scale that's on the shell. So I did that. It came back a little bit, but usually if they're faded when you find them, they're going to be faded forever or whatever, but that doesn't take away uh, from the shell itself, so to speak. Uh, you know, they might not be gems, but they're your, 
to your gems. And I just dropped mine and I picked this one up. So anyway, that is uh, the Crown Conch. Uh, as we said, they're very variable. You can get them. They're, they're really long and they don't, some of them don't even have the, the spikes. Uh, and visiting the, the uh, uh, Academy of Science in Philadelphia, there's a turban snail that they have on display where so they did research that these sort of spikes actually may be a consequence of the diet. So who knows? Uh, you know, most likely, in my estimate, when you see stuff like that, uh, it's, you know, goes back to that story of uh, the splitters and the clumpers. Uh, sometimes you like to be a splitter because that just means that the world is much more varied. And then other times uh, you like to be a clumper because, uh, uh, well, really it's just, uh, you know, just a variety of a single animal. Uh, and so uh, uh, my on this particular one, I while I collect multiple ones, I think they're really all the same. I think uh, probably just some change in diet and uh, that's given us the variety but nonetheless a beautifully created shell the crown conch